Okay, hello everybody. My name is Zach Brumbach. I'm one of the uh, student instructors for this class. Um, a little bit about me is I've been teaching this class for one semester. This is my first time teaching this, but I've been teaching, um, or I've been TAing the Intro to Linear Algebra class, Math 1553, for about six semesters. But I'm very excited to actually be teaching something I have two degrees in. So I finished my undergrad at Georgia Tech in Double E in 2022, and I just finished my master's last spring. So I, uh, I was fortunate enough to get a position to be able to teach this class, something that I know very well and enjoy a lot, and teach it to all y'all other engineers that are non electrical engineers. So the format of this today is going to be, I'm just going to be here, and y'all ask me any questions you have, and we'll go through it as thorough or as light as you want. They don't have to be specific questions. They can be, I don't understand how to set up and solve uh, a first order RC circuit, and we'll do that. Um, or they can be something is, whatever is something that you don't understand we can go through, okay? Um, and this is also something that you guys lead. If there aren't any questions, I'll go through something that, a couple of things that I think are more important. Uh, I'll go through the practice, practice exam, for example. Um, yeah, so what what questions do y'all have? What, what are y'all um, struggling with leading up to the exam? Could you uh, go through problem two on exam one that's in the folders? Exam practice one? Exam? Yes, the first practice exam. Yes, I figured it wasn't the real exam because I'm not going yeah. to. Yeah, that'd be too easy. It, it would, it would. So this is just normal exam one. From previous semesters, just the one titled exam one, not ABC. Yes. Okay. Let me pull it up. And you said problem two? Yep. Okay. The whole thing? If you wouldn't mind, that'd be awesome. Yeah. No, absolutely. <clears throat> Desktop. Okay. All right. And just to totally confirm, this is the right one. Yes. Yep, that's it. Great. All right. So this is a question of superposition. What superposition is, is it's us using um, something that I'm very familiar with, linear algebra, or the principle of a linear system, to be able to solve something. So instead of solving the circuit in full with two sources and having to combine and do different things, what we do is we basically break the system apart and we look at each source individually. We look at them one at a time, okay? And then since... Um, Ohm's law and what we study in this class, linear circuits are linear by definition. Uh, we can just combine them. We just add the contributions from each source. Um, so the format that I usually like to solve a superposition problem is step one, zero, all sources, except one. Okay, and what I mean by zero is a current source becomes zero amps, okay? And something with zero amps flowing through it is a break in the circuit and open. And a voltage source with zero volts across it is equivalent to just a wire, okay? There's no voltage difference across that component. Okay, and after we redraw the circuit, so this is, well, I'll get to the next part. Two, find contribution of whatever, thing of interest, a current over a resistor, a voltage across a resistor, what have you. Find contribution from that source. Step three, repeat for all sources. And then step four is add contributions. <clears throat> okay, so these are the steps. Let's go through them. Well, what it's asking here is we're going to take this in exactly this process one at a time. So I'll call this one source one, and I'll call this one source two. Okay, so now we're going to solve for source one. So this is uh, this is for IS, okay? 
where, and I'm gonna write these on here. All of my resistors are one kilo ohm. My voltage source is 15 volts. And my IS is two milliamps, okay? And these are all, okay, resistors. One kilo ohm, 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 okay. So the goal is to find the voltage across this from each part, add them together so that we get the total voltage across that. So for source one, let's redraw the circuit. Okay, so we keep our source the same. And we look like this. So what happens here is this one becomes this short here, all right? <clears throat> so now our goal is to look for this, the voltage here. Or again, this is two milliamps, and all of my resistors are uh, one kilo ohm. So the way I usually like to do these, there's a few different ways, but we can simplify this first, and then I like to do some uh, resistive analysis from there. Okay, so this here is equivalent to, since this is a short, is just a wire in parallel with this, essentially no current is going to want to go through a path that's more resistive, where there's <clears throat> If you can get on a road where there's no cars, there's no reason to get into traffic, okay? So what this is equivalent to is all of this part over here goes away because we can just go around it with this wire created from our voltage source. So we can redraw this as a circuit that looks like this. Redraw it just a little bit. So here we have blue in green. Resistor one, resistor two, and resistor, oh, I haven't named it there, and resistor three, where now this is one and two and three. So does this make sense so far how I've redrawn this? Yes. Great. <clears throat> okay. So usually what I do is I redraw the circuit and then I analyze it, what, uh, what I think would be the easiest way to break it down. So what this looks like to me is this looks like a current device like the definition of it, okay? So we're looking for our goal here, all right? So let's find the current through this resistor. This isn't what we want to end up with, which is the voltage, but using Ohm's law, if we have um, the current in the resistance, we get the voltage across it, okay? And we always assume the current is in the direction of plus to minus for our resistor. And that, to go beyond the scope of what you need to know for this exam, is because a resistor is a very lossy component, it's actually usually where most of your power gets sunk. Um, so I did the read, because we always assume current going in, so we have the net positive power, so we're losing power in the resistor. All that goes to say is always draw your resistors with plus and minus in the arrow going in that same direction. Okay. <clears throat> so here we have a current divider. Okay. And the formula for that is I for that branch is equal to <clears throat> it is R equivalent over R I times I in <clears throat> so in this case R equivalent for three one kilo ohm resistors in parallel is one third kilo ohm divided by this branch's resistance, which is one K times I in, which is two milliamps. Okay. So this is just equivalent to one third times two milli, which is two thirds milliamps. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So the current is just divided between the three different resistors that all have equivalent resistance. Say that one more time. The current is just divided between all of the three different resistors because it creates mm -hmm. a full circuit. Yep. So they're okay. divided equally in this case. Each one will get a third of the current because they're equal value. One kilo ohm, one kilo ohm, one kilo ohm. So it would make sense that it would be split evenly. Where, uh, for example, if you have one kilo ohm and two kilo ohms in parallel, 
you would get the opposite part current. So the one kilo ohm would get two parts current and the two kilo ohm would get one part current. So you, in the three parts, you get two thirds going through one kilo ohm and uh, one third going through two. But this is always the formula you use here. <clears throat> Does that okay. concept also apply to voltage divider in the same way? Yeah, uh, it's reciprocal, right? So if we have a one kilo ohm and two kilo ohm in series with a three volt source, we're going to get one part of the voltage drop across the one kilo ohm and two parts across the two kilo ohm. So th there's a lot of parallels in this class of like converse converses like that. Uh, and one of those is the voltage and current. Because voltage, you'll have a smaller drop over less resistance. And for current, you'll have more current through less resistance. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So now going through here, just to solve for this voltage contribution here, we have uh, I and we have R. Two thirds milli times one uh, K, which gives me two thirds volt. Does someone have a um, question? Yeah, I have a quick question. Yep. Um, I hopped on late, so maybe I've just missed it, but I'm confused on how you got one third for the equilibrium R. So that's R equivalent. Okay. So it's the R equivalent of these three uh, resistors in parallel. So we have one over one over one plus one over one kilo ohm plus one over one kilo ohm, which is one over three. Okay. So that's kilo ohms. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. No, no, no. totally good. I, please ask these questions. If you have them, someone else has them as well. So. <clears throat> okay. So now we have our voltage contribution from the second part. So this is equal to. Uh, we'll call it VR2I. Okay, so far so good. Any other questions about where we're at right now? Uh, I have a quick question. Yep. Um, just like in general, why are you using superposition here over something like uh, mesh or loops? So you could use mesh and nodes to just solve for the total voltage C. But something you'll notice in a lot of the projects, projects practice exams is they're specifically trying to drive you for a specific solution. Um, so for example, here asking for the voltage contribution from each source is superposition. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and they're just trying to steer you into like a clear way to solve it so that we can see that you know how to solve it in that way. Mm -hmm. So I think in like the normal practice exam, the first one was like a node analysis question and then it was this and then it was I don't know, some kind of equivalent. And then the last one was like an RC for the practice, right? It's yeah. the same sort of like, it's just meant so we can see the process you're following instead of having to grade an exam like nine different ways. So the fact that it's asking for all these different contributions is like the giveaway that it is superposition. Yes. Okay. Um, likewise, if it's asking for voltages at nodes, that's node analysis. It's asking through currents, through a specific thing, it's usually mesh analysis. Right. Cool. Cool. Okay. So again, this is part B. For part A, we're going to redraw this circuit again with my just my voltage source. So we're going to have this. We're going to have, instead of a current source, we're going to have a break in my circuit. We're going to have this resistor, a voltage source. We're going to have resistor, resistor. I think this is how they drew it. Is that correct? Oh, there's one more I missed. Yeah. Uh, I'll make this the resistor and then this is a break. It's because I don't want to redraw it. And again, here is the voltage I'm looking for. <clears throat> so I'm just going to redraw this as just to make it a little bit clearer when we're ignoring that break. So there's a few different ways to solve this. Um, I'll solve this just because it's my personal preference. Uh, I like to solve these using re uh, resistive equivalencies, okay? So I'm just gonna break this into parts that we can combine. Um, let me actually think this through real quick. Actually, let's use node analysis, why not? Kill two birds with one stone. 
Okay, for node analysis, steps are as follows. Number one, name nodes and assign a ground. Two, set up KCL equations for each node. Three is solve. And for this, we usually use the equation, uh, the reorganized Ohm's law of I equals V over R. So what I've done first is I've assigned this to my ground node because it's the lower end of my voltage source, which makes life a little easy. Um, I'm gonna call this node here, node A. I'm gonna call this node here, node B. And this one, actually I'll call this one B and I'll call the other one C. Boop, 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 okay. <clears throat> Sorry. So the easiest one here, actually, I'll just write all this out. A, well, V A, V B, B C. These are going to be the equations I use. Okay. What we're looking for is we're looking for this voltage here. Okay, which is V A minus zero. So from the top minus the bottom, the voltage difference across this resistor. <clears throat> and we're going to do this with some KCL. I'm going to go ahead and assign pluses and minuses to all my resistors. So this tells me this one's going this way, this one's going this way, this one's going this way, this way, and this way. Okay. And remember for KCL, it says I in equals I out. Okay. So I'll do VB first, VB. Well, we have a very clear definition of what VB is. It's from ground up 15 volts. So VB is just 15 volts, okay? Boom, one equation, done, right off the bat, okay? <clears throat> For VA, we have to set this up as an equation. So coming in, we have the voltage across this resistor here. So the voltage there is gonna be VB minus VA over the resistance, which is one kilo ohm, okay? Because remember, we're rewriting our currents as V over R. So that's the only one going in is equal to my outs, which is VA minus zero over one kilo ohm plus VA minus zero over one kilo ohm. Okay. And then I'll write out my equation for VC, even though it's actually not that relevant here. And what we'll have is we'll have going in, we have VB minus VC over 1000 equals VC minus zero over 1000. Okay. So we can rewrite all, all of these. The thing I usually like to do is get rid of the denominator by multiplying by the um, least common denominator, multiplying by the denominator that gets rid, by a number that gets rid of all denominators, right? So I'm gonna rewrite this as just multiplying everything by a thousand and I get VB minus VA equals two VA. VB equals three VA. And down here, we're gonna have VB minus VC equals VC, which gives me VB equals two VC. And remember that we know what VB is, we know it's 15. So here, I can solve this and this accordingly. I have 15 equals three VA. So VA is equal to five. And here I have 15 is equal to two VC. So VC is equal to 7.5 volts. And remember that the thing that we were originally looking for is this one circled here, okay? Which is VA minus zero, the difference from VA to the ground, the voltage drop across it. So here we get VR2 from our voltage source is equal to 
VA minus zero, which is just five volts. So this is for part A. And then part B is here. So we have up here, we have part C, find the total voltage. So for part C, we have the voltage across the resistor two from the current contribution, current source. And we have the voltage contribution across R2 from the voltage source, which is one third plus five, which is equal to, not, not equivalent to 16 thirds. Any questions question, on this process? Did we not find that it was two thirds? We did, and math is hard. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Please correct me. If I'm wrong, I, I need to know. <laughs> I don't want anyone getting the wrong idea that I'm solving something wrong. I just forgot exactly what number it was. Uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. For the node analysis, just making 100% sure, how do you know, like in the numerator, which voltage is subtracts which voltage? Like if it's VA minus VB versus VA minus It's VB. always, always, always plus, minus, minus. So when we did, let me erase some of this stuff and get a little closer in here. When we're looking at node A, all right, going in for that one, it's going to be, oh, shit, that's an eraser. It's going to be this side minus this side, okay? And then across the bottom, it's going to be this side minus this side and this side minus this side, okay? Does that make Thank sense? You. Yeah. Yeah. And some other important things to know that uh, might not be as familiar to you is you might have like a voltage source in series. Don't get tripped up by something like this, okay? This is just like two batteries stacked up on top of each other. Like if this is ground and this is 15 and this is 15, a voltage source always defines from the bottom to the top, right? So from here to here, this is plus 15. From here to here, that's plus 15. This gives you 30 volts, okay? So why unlike your Xbox controller, you have two batteries and they're each 1.5 volts. So it's getting a three volt supply. So what that sort of stuff needs. Okay. Before, before we source, move off of yep. node analysis, I wanted to ask, what's your process for placing your ground and also like identifying your nodes? I know that placing the ground mm -hmm. like close to a voltage source relatively helps because it can help like take the bottom of a circuit to just zero volts and then everything yeah. flowing down or across in series will have to um, so travel I usually, over. Yeah, I usually think of where I put my ground is where everything else is coming from. So if there's a few sources that all like have like a bottom part or we have like a source that builds on the source, I like to put it at the very bottom of whatever I'm doing, the very furthest like. So from there I can build out, okay? Um, it doesn't matter. It is totally arbitrary. I also, what I like to do is um, I'll either put it at the bottom of my bottom voltage source, or I'll put it at um, a node where I have, would have the most equations. Like here, if I were to do the bottom node, I would have one, two, three, four contributions, which is a lot. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. And then like, I think the reason why I mess up node analysis so much is that I kind of just don't understand the difference between nodes and junctions can you just like like yes. dumb explain me what is a like, node yeah have you used something like ms paint or any kind of like editing tool like that before no okay have you ever used like a, a, a color fill tool in powerpoint or anything like that no i kind of just write on paper yeah okay totally um what i mean by that is if i like select a color and i tap here and it fills this whole space that's like the kind of oh. fill that i'm talking about here so the way I think about a node is just with a fill tool. Okay, that, that's what I equate it to. So for instance, if I have some crazy circuit, something that you would never see hopefully on an exam. Where maybe this goes here, maybe this goes into here, which goes up here. Which in this one branches here, which has a T junction here and another one here. Okay, something absolutely just a headache of a time, okay? The way that I like to do, I like to think about my nodes is if I were to put my pen on something, I set my boundaries as everywhere that it goes to that hits a component, okay? And those are my borders. And then I draw and connect all of my borders 
and that is my node. Okay. That is so much easier. I wish that that was in the um, like lecture videos. Mm -hmm. It's just a teaching style thing. So a lot of people visualize this stuff very differently. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, sometimes you see something that clicks, someone doesn't present it to you in a way that's more uh, understandable. But that's what I'm here for tonight, right? Trying to make sure y'all are as ready as you can be. So like this node over here, this would be a second node. Here we have a third. Here we have a fourth. A fifth. A sixth. And a seventh. And in this circuit, I would make this one my ground so that I immediately know what this one is because it's whatever this voltage difference is. And then I can go around from there and try solving this, which will be a mess. This is not anything you will ever you should expect to see, right? This is, first of all, I can tell you right now that there are uh, conversions on here that you don't know how to do, and that's okay. So, but just as an example to see what nodes are is what the point of this is, okay? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions on this sort of stuff? So the way you just drew nodes, is that also why VA that we saw for in the problem above? Is that why VA is also VR2 because it's like connected to the same node? Yeah, exactly. Because the voltage across here is top minus bottom. Okay. So since we assigned the ground node at the bottom, it makes our life a little easier. If we were looking for the voltage across this, and that's what we were solving to superimpose, the voltage across it, so V uh, R four from our voltage would be V B minus V C. Okay. Okay, I think I see what you mean by plus minus minus now. Yeah. Yeah, and again, the thing you have to be extremely careful about is if we switch this. Okay, so if instead we make this minus and plus, and this goes this way. Okay, now it's V C minus V B. Okay, but since we've specified this differently in our equations down here, for like node C, for instance, this would be negative. This would be on the other side. So the way we define this defines our negatives and it will all cancel out and it will always be consistent so long as you're always plus minus current, okay? Um, for this one, since technically the current is like leaving node C, like the way you just drew it, if you just mm -hmm. move it to the other side and have VC minus VB, but like have that term be positive, is that still valid? Yeah, it's the same thing here, right? It's just on the other side of the equals. It would just move over and add. Got it. Make sense? Yep. Cool. Good. But yeah, pure preference, always, always, always plus to minus for current for resistors. It's arbitrary when you draw it, but once you draw it, you have to stick with it. Okay. Because if you get it wrong, you'll just get negatives. So for instance, if we solved it like this, we would actually get um, like red VB. So red VB would be equal to negative blue VB, where I drew them backwards. Okay, so we'll just be solving for a negative number. It would all cancel out. Okay, don't stress that about stress about that too much. It is arbitrary and just pure preference in how you pick it. Okay, other questions we have. Um, what's like the hardest problem that will be on the first test? Will it be a RC circuit or like a switch? I yeah, a switch RC. Um, so that what that requires is um, I'll just copy it from the practice exam so we can talk about it. Um, because what this makes you do is it makes you solve a differential equation. It makes you find a Thevenin equivalent. It makes you solve something like mesh node or superposition. Um. So it just forces you to do everything that you've learned so far. That's what these questions do. And that's what I consider the most difficult because there's a lot more that you need to understand. I wouldn't call this problem necessarily hard. I mean, once you know the process, it's very formulaic, thankfully, but um, there we go. I just think like reviewing the process as a whole, since it captures yeah. a, a lot of things we've learned. Mm -hmm. It's helpful because it still confused me when we first yeah. did it. No, absolutely. So you'll usually see it in a form that looks like this. And what this is asking you is it's asking to get to the point 
the eventual solution, which is V feminine, minus V T naught minus V feminine E to the T over R C, negative T. Okay. Let me think about this to make sure this is right. This is backwards. This is plus. E. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Does this look familiar? This looks like the one I gave you in your notes. I just want to make sure I don't have any of the notation wrong or anything. You also see this is k tau plus v of t naught minus k tau e to the minus t over tau equals v, uh, v of t, okay? So this is what they're trying to build you up to, okay? The solution to the differential equation of a circuit in the form of this, okay? Where this resistor has R feminine, this voltage has V feminine, and this capacitor has capacitance C, okay? So to solve this equation, it's pretty clear what you need. You need a feminine voltage. You need an initial time, and you need an equivalent resistance and capacitance. So let me just specify that this is the feminine resistance, okay? So this question, though it looks much more wordy, this is V of T naught. This is V feminine. This makes you solve for R feminine. So that you can multiply it by C, which C is given. It's just whatever C1 is. Okay. And this one is just using V of T. Okay. So I think this is the most complicated type, type of problem. And to do this, A draw, well, let me write this out. The process is always the exact same. One draw uh, steady state at t before switch. Okay. From here, solve for voltage across capacitor. Okay. So in this case, what this would look like would be step one. Um, is open before that time. Okay, so what we're looking for is we're looking for the voltage from here to here, so across this, right? So to analyze that, we're looking for the voltage across this resistor here, right? Because it's just the jump from these two sides, which the nodes are shared across the resistor and across the capacitor. So we would find this voltage, and that would be my V time naught, okay? And this gets V of T not two. Draw steady state at T after switch. Okay. So you're doing the exact same thing here. Solve or voltage cross. Ah. Your switch. Uh, not not switch. Cap, 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 cap. Okay, and this is because I'm solving all these in terms of a cap because at, at steady state, the capacitor doesn't have any current, so it's an open. Okay. So one note is at steady state, a capacitor. And this is A and B is the same thing as an open A. To B. And if we're looking for the voltage across A to B when it's open, that's a feminine equivalent voltage. So this gets V at time approaches infinity, which is V feminine. Note, you're solving for an L, okay? This gets ISC, okay? And in that case, um, your cap 
or your inductor, sorry, from A to B is equal to just a short from A to B, where this voltage is some voltage in this current to some current. So this is what we're looking for at steady state. This for a cap or this for an inductor. You're solving for the same thing before and after the switch. Before the switch gets you your initial condition. After it gets you your I, uh, your I short circuit, your Norton equivalent current, or your V thevenin, your uh, thevenin equivalent voltage. Okay. <clears throat> so we have two steps so far. Step three, find R thevenin across the cap. Four, find tau, your time constant, which is equal to R thevenin times C. And five is just plug in. Okay. So this is the step-by-step -step process. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Can you scroll back to the top where you did the first drawing? Okay. Yeah, is before. That good? Can you read all this? Yeah, wait. So the first drawing in blue is before the switch is even open, right? Yes, this is at T equals zero minus. So before the switch. Okay. Okay. So you still draw the right half, like even though the you switch. You still is draw it, open. though, as you can clearly, you clearly see. This is just an open, right? So there's not going to be any current, so you can just cross it off. Okay. Okay. It's a, just a dead end. There's, there's a road with an end. There's no loop back to the rest of the circuit. No current is going to want to go that way. Um, if this was a current source instead of a voltage source, the circuit would explode. Because <laughs> you can't force current through an open. Uh, you start getting breakdown and weird mechanical materials properties stuff. So just to redraw this for completeness at T equals, uh, we'll call it infinity, okay. Okay, what we're looking for there is now this is closed. And here we still have our cap that is broken. And we're once again looking for this voltage, which is the voltage across that, okay. I would study this circuit using node analysis or superposition. Either is fine. So for instance, if I wanted to do node, boom, a ground, call this A, call this B, call this one C. Voltage at A is just the voltage across here. Voltage at B is just the voltage across here. You have one equation for this whole node. Easy to solve. Or you and can use the cap, or why are you drawing the cap as a open? Uh, because we're looking at steady state at time infinity. Okay, so a cap is it open at steady. That's correct. Yep, yep, yep. Think that you have two plates, right? Um, they're gonna try their best. They're gonna charge, and as like the as the voltage is changing a little bit, you're gonna get some stuff passing. But at some point, you just have two metal plates across from each other, where things are steady and it's properly charged. It's like the lab today. You saw that when things change, the cap moved in current and voltage. But after an amount of time, it flattened off. So we're looking way past that flattening, where it's just okay. totally open. There's a voltage drop, and that's it. Cool? Makes sense. Good. All right. Any other questions about this type of problem here? Right. Uh, yeah. No, I'll post these notes. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. I just wanted to see the bottom. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'll post these notes. Um, for those of you in my section as well, I posted all of my notes that I've been done up to this point on my page. Uh, you're on the, the canvas for sections B and D. Any other types of problems that y'all have anything? For this circuit, can we solve for VTH and RTH? Sure, let's do it. So for VTH and RTH, we're going to be looking at time infinity. Okay. <clears throat> so 
So let's solve this. I would do this again with node analysis. Is that okay? Or would you like to do a uh, mesh? Going once, node analysis, twice. Node analysis it is. So remember the steps for node, set a ground, name your other nodes. Step one, we've done that. Here's my ground, here's my other nodes. Now let's just start looking at them. So we have for V at A, V at B, V at C, okay? For V at A, uh, let me check what these sources were. So this one's 10, this one's 15. And my three resistors are all 10 kilo ohms. Okay. I'll solve this doing, uh, yeah, let's do node. So at A, we're going, we just have a voltage source from ground. So it must be VA equals 10. Okay, you see a voltage source, your job is done if it's ground to somewhere else. Or for instance, if I have something that looks like this and I know what V, we call it uh, V10, for instance, if we're in a very complicated circuit and I have some weird branch going up, uh, I have some weird stuff going up from here. Okay. And I know this is 15 volts. I don't have to do any other work. So this, we'll say this is five volts. This is a three volt source. So the voltage here is gonna be eight because we add, and the voltage here is going to be 23 because we're just adding 15, okay? So that is a more general example just to talk about how these things sort of work. So at VB, we also have it easily defined. VB is just from ground to B. So I, I keep drawing my arrows backwards because I'm thinking of a uh, current instead, but, or not. Um, so 15 volts here to here. So this is plus 15 of whatever this node is, and this is ground. So these, VB is just my 15 volts. And now we're solving for an equation at VC. So let me get in here and draw my plus minus. This is already defined as a plus and minus. So the current will be going this way. Um, and let me actually draw that with this resistor, current going that way here, plus minus current going in. Okay. Current going in. Let me redraw this over here just because I've made a mess. where I've made this my ground, I made this A, made this B, made this C. And we're looking for the voltage from here to here, which is this node to this node, okay? So what I'm particularly interested in is VC minus zero is equal to V feminine, okay? So that's, where, that's what I'm looking across. I'm looking from the nodes that the capacitor is broken. It's not because this is a special resistor. It's because I'm looking for the nodes or the difference in those two nodes. So we're looking across the total gap there, okay? Which happens to be the same as the nodes that the resistor is attached to. <clears throat> so let me draw the others here that we specified, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay. So the equation for VC. It's going to be going in, we have VA minus VC over 10 kilo ohms. Also going in, we have VB minus VC over 10 kilo ohms. And going out, we have VC minus zero over 10 kilo ohms. So I'm going to multiply all of this by 10K, <clears throat> which then gives me VA plus VB minus two VC equals VC. So VA plus VB is equal to three VC, where VA is 10 plus 15 is equal to three VC. We have 25 over three is equal to VC. And that's that. Does that make sense? So this is VC, which again, we said VC minus zero is V feminine. So this is my V. Any questions about how to get to this part?
Um, can you quickly explain well, one more time why VC is v feminine? It's because um you said it's that resistor is touching the capacitor, right? So what I'm really looking for is I'm looking for the gap here to here, right? Yeah. Which is this node to this node, which just so happens to have a single resistor between them. So the voltage from this to this is just this gap, which is just the resistor, since the resistor is conveniently between the two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. That's... So it's just really convenient that this resistor is here right now. If, for instance, this was a slightly different circuit, and say that we had two resistors here, okay, and we would have to call this one node D, okay, we would be looking for V Thevenin to still be VC minus zero from VC to our ground node. VD would be in between, and there wouldn't be any one resistor that makes it easy, but we're still looking for the difference in those two nodes, okay? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Cool, okay. So coming back over here, that's V Thevenin. Now let's find R Thevenin, okay? So let's redraw the circuit again for R Thevenin. And remember for R Thevenin, step one, zero, all sources. This is for RTH. Step two is we redraw. Step three, find our equivalent between A and B. So here, we're redrawing this as A, B. So we're looking for the equivalent resistance from A to B. And this is where knowing nodes comes in a large amount of handy. Because how many nodes do we have in this circuit? Well, we have the node A is attached to. It's node one. And we have node that B is attached to, which is node two. And something you will conveniently realize is all three of these resistors are in parallel. So I'm just going to redraw the circuit to make it a little bit clearer. So I'm going to redraw this first. I'm just going to pull A out. Because this doesn't really mean anything. I'm just labeling them, right? Okay, this doesn't, them being pointed in or pointed out doesn't make a difference. It's just a floating wire that we're looking at the equal in between. So we can also redraw this if we just want to reorder it a little bit. this from A to B. So here we have 10, 10, and 10. So since we have three branches with equal resistances, those are my qualifiers to make this easy, the equivalent is just 10 over number of branches. So from A to B, we have 10 over third over three kilo ohms. So 3.3 repeating kilo ohms is equal to R an equivalent. Okay. If you are good at noticing the nodes, you can just jump straight here to here. You don't have to redraw pulling out the A's and B's. It just kind of makes it look a little easier. So it's nicer to follow. Um, yeah, and that's it. Now we have R Thevenin. We have uh, V Thevenin. We could find V initial. It's not particularly hard. Um, so like here in this circuit, it's just a very easy voltage divider, right? Because the second half of this is broken. So we're looking from here to here, where this is 10, this is 10, this is VS1 is 10, that's easy. This is a voltage divider, I'm looking for the V across R2, which is equal to V at time zero, which is V in, times 10 over 20, Ri over R equivalent. Give me 10 times 0.5, one half, give me five volts equals V of T naught. 
Okay. So we have part one, we have part two, we have part three. Okay. And from there, we slap it into this equation and we solve for whatever value of t they tell us to find v. Can you scroll back up really quick to the v when t equals zero stuff? Does this cover everything? Yeah. Okay, good. So that one is particularly easy in this case because we have a voltage source with two equivalent resistant resistors, uh, two equal resistors in this case. So it's just a 50-50 split. Think of if you have like a voltage source and you have two branches that are equally difficult to go through, you're just gonna split half and half, okay? Likewise, if you have um, if you have two resistors and you have one ohm and two ohms, you're gonna have uh, one third of your voltage drop across the part, the top one part. You're gonna have two parts across the two ohm because it's twice as difficult to go through the two as the one for that. So that's a quick, easy way to remember a voltage divider like that. Um, but yeah. How do you know when to use voltage divider versus current divider? Um, they just have a nice pretty form that you'll see every time. This is always a, a voltage divider. Voltage source, series resistors, done. Current divider will always look exactly the same, which we saw earlier. Current source, parallel resistors, okay? Voltage source in series, that's a voltage divider. Current source, parallel resistors, current divider, okay? Make sense? Can you say that one more time? Yeah, so current source, parallel resistors, current divider. Voltage source, series resistors, voltage divider, okay? Another reason that this is true, that you can kind of see it easily, is, let me do this down here. Say we have a current source, and say instead we have series resistors, okay? There's no math to do here because the current through this is all the same. So I can very quickly just get V equals IR and V equals IR. There's no like clear division. It's just whatever the resistance is, my voltage will scale accordingly immediately, okay? Likewise, if I have the opposite uh, case for a voltage source, okay? I already know the voltage across all of these. So let's call this 10 volts, call this ground. The voltage across all of this is 10, equals Ri, 10 equals Ri, 10 equals Ri. So that's why it's not a divider. It's just specifying each branch. That's why these are not dividers. These are what we call easy. No, oh, that's not how we spell easy though. <laughs> okay, because if you already have something that's specified, the voltage or current through resistor, you're just done immediately. There's no extra formula. Okay. Other questions we have? Going once? Anything at all? Anything that's slightly confusing in concepts, an idea? Uh, inductors and capacitors? Sure. Broadly or with the equations? Oh, uh, with the equations. Okay. I did, I missed that lecture, but I saw the notes, but mm -hmm. I guess hearing it explained again would be good. Yep, all good. So inductors and capacitors are converses, okay? So an inductor is my L, my capacitor is my C, okay? An inductor passes DC, okay? Uh, DC current, I should say. And it blocks AC. Okay, these, these are broader purposes for when we get down the road and stuff, just like ideas of what they do. Capacitor is exactly opposite. It blocks DC, or it's resistant to DC, and it passes AC. Okay, these are general terms right now. They have equations associated with them. This is the actual application of what we use them for, okay? For an inductor, the voltage is defined as the inductance d over d times the time derivative of the current. Okay, 
For the capacitor, it's the exact opposite. The current is defined as the capacitance times the time derivative of the voltage. Yes. Okay. Current is zero. Current is constant. We have no voltage. Yes. Good. Okay. And here, I is defined as one over L times the integral from T naught to T of V of tau d tau plus my initial condition, which is I of T naught. And here my voltage is defined similarly as one over C integral from T naught to T of I tau d tau plus V of T naught. Okay. And your L looks like this. Some people usually draw it. Cap looks like that. Okay. So your inductor is like if you have like a coil of something, you have a big wrap of like a spool of wire around it and that's how we create it. A capacitor is two physical metal plates with some dielectric gap between it. Okay. And one more little note here is steady state. Steady state is a short. So that's just connection. Okay. And over here, steady state is an open. Okay. That's why we look for the initial condition across two things. Or here, we would look for the initial condition of I T naught between that through that wire. Okay. okay. Any other questions about this stuff? Um, real quick, what is tau? Tau is my time constant. Okay. So tau would be in a question like this, uh, my resistor, or tau is equal to R feminine times C, okay? And this is the time it takes to get technically at 0 0.64, it's one over E. So uh, this all called about two thirds from initial to final, okay? So like in, I don't have any space right here. I have a graph of a capacitor charging up like we saw in the lab today, right? Where it's charging up to meet some voltage. And maybe let's say that I have an offset. So I start here and the capacitor that charges up and gets close at, from my initial to my top when we're two thirds the way there, that time is what we call tau. So that's physically what it is. Um, this is how we equate it for our capacitor. For our inductor, it's just a RL, but cool. Thank you. Anything else? Oops. Twice. All right. Um, let me double check to see if anything got. Y'all haven't seen a canvas announcement yet? Oh, no, there it is. One minute ago. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording.